Welcome to our channel. For those of you who are new around here, we're Paltai International and we created a sculpting medium called Paltai Premium that looks and feels just like clay but cures stone hard. Before we dive into today's video, check out the other five parts. Hi, this is Kim Beaton. I'm here with Stephen Saunders who worked the paint scheme out on our floating mountain. Hi, Stephen. Say something interesting and cool. Hi, Kim. Good morning. <laughs> We were building this for quite a long time, and I showed you pictures of classic Han Nanbo, and you translated that into the really beautiful paint job that ultimately was on the sculpture. How did you do that? Well, the, the, everything was already there, of course. The sculpture is beautiful. There's a lot of depth and definition in how it was sculpted. I tend to paint like a, an effect, a paint effect, a visual effect, because I do miniatures for film, of course. The most important thing for me is to get your base color right. If you go too dark, you can't really put a lot of white, lighter colors over the top because that always looks a little funny. You can do it, but it's not my preference. So we found a base tone. And then essentially what I try and do is I try and break it down into only a few steps. So the whole paint job is only four or five steps if, mm. you, if you can. Uh, so we started with a base tone and then from the base tone I usually do a really quick dry brush that's a lighter color than the base tone just to pick up all the high points mm. and my dry brushing as you well know is quite heavy mm. uh, and doesn't look great but the thing is it gives the whole sculpture a high contrast that you then can see it's like a road map where you want to accentuate and where you mm -hmm. want to soften. And it read well. You had to make it really pop because all the subsequent layers toned it down considerably. Yeah, because from there what you're doing is you're doing wet, runny washes that go over the top of that dry brush and base layer that softens it all out and blends mm -hmm. it out. And a lot of that is actually going in, especially with this sculpture, going in and darkening all the low points with runs of browns, blacks, and greens. I'm not a big fan of using pure black. So the black's a little bit brown or a little bit green. It just gives it more life. Yeah. Uh, again, not necessarily applicable to a sculpture, but we always call a black paint job dead pixels in an image because it just disappears. Mm. And sometimes that works, but I prefer to have a little bit of life in every little piece of a paint job, every little piece of a sculpture. My art teacher in, in high school pointed out to me that when you do a painting, you should be able to zoom in like Blade Runner, right? You zoom in on a little piece of a, mm. of a painting and that little piece should also be interesting. There should be at least something about mm. that little piece anywhere on the painting that should be interesting too. So. When you're dealing with miniatures, that applies really, really well because, of course, miniatures are a whole world that you're presenting, a whole little alternate reality that you're the god looking down onto. So every little piece does want to be interesting because it could be someone's entire world in that little square centimeter block. It's It was a little different to my usual process because usually I am the one also creating the sculpture uh, so it was quite fun to actually step in and look at a sculpture that was done entirely without my involvement and then try and find a way to paint it so that was a little different but um, when you're le looking at a piece like that you really want to you really want to get to what is the immediate effect or the emotion of the reaction of a viewer and how do you curate that into something really cool? Um, a sense of mood, a sense of place, a sense of story about what is this place, who lives there, uh, the history of the place. And that then feeds into the kind of reference that you, that you look at. You'd already done a lot of references that you had for the sculpture anyway, so it was just a case of finding the best of those for what you're after. The other thing that was a little different as well is that I'm used to working with studio lighting to get 
that model to have a um, ideal appearance under studio lights for a piece of film. But this is something that's going to sit outside, it's going to sit in daylight, in golden lighting, in nighttime, and it needs to look great all round. So I had to uh, curb the interest in trying to make it look amazing in the lighting I was seeing it in at the time, which was your studio. And it looks fabulous where it's at now. Outside, mm, it that does, paint yeah. job looks spectacular. There's one, one thing that, that I always call sunspotting. So you just find the spots in the sculpture that you want to highlight and you want to pronounce a little. And even if it's in full sunlight, those areas still pop just a little bit. It's almost like artificially popping the areas where you want it to feel like God rays have fallen onto a little town or a little waterfall. Mm, yeah. Now, you recently did the miniatures for Blade Runner. Tw 2049. 2049. Yep. A whole lot of miniatures where you and I worked together on Thunderbirds for a couple of years. Yep. It's creating that story. So you're right. It's God zooming in on these microscopic landscapes. And this is truly a miniature landscape. When I work on any sort of visual art at this point, it's very heavily tainted by my history as a visual effects artist using sculpture, using miniatures. Well, it's an absolutely awesome job. It's a gorgeous piece. Now, have you gone down and seen it in person yet? We've driven past it. It looks amazing from the street. I must admit I haven't stopped to have a look at it. But oh, it looks man. gorgeous. Yeah, sure? absolutely gorgeous. It is. That paint job just sizzles. And that little town is such a lovely little Easter egg in there. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, Stephen. This has been wonderful. Honestly, I've learned something from you just sitting in here. I knew you were, had these thought processes behind what you did, but you've never vocalized them. This is cool. Yeah, cool. We should do this again. <laughs> Anytime, Kim. <laughs> cool. I'll buy you pizza next time. Awesome. So when I first started working with Paltaya at all, or when I first started on this project, I was so stressed and focused on doing it right and figuring out, okay, how do rocks work and what should this look like? I had so much fun learning how to do it. I, I imagine eventually, one day in the future, I'll get tired of rocks. But in the meantime, um, doing all the different tricks for getting the faces and everything. Don't forget to become a Paltaya Insider and get access to bonus content offers and more.